It's 2023. Sounds Profitable has a whole new look, some new team members, and we're looking ahead towards a year packed with value for the audio and podcasting industries. Special thanks to our partners for making Sounds Profitable possible. Check them out by going to soundsprofitable.com and clicking on their logos in the article. Welcome to Sounds Profitable Ad Tech Applied. I'm Ariel Nissenblatt. On the show, I've got Brian Barletta and Manuela Bedoya. We're talking about what's new at Sounds Profitable for 2023 and how you can get involved. Let's get into it. Listeners, it's been a minute since we've had a new episode of Ad Tech Applied, so thank you for hitting play on this episode and welcoming us back into your earbuds. I'm excited to be joined in the virtual Squadcast studio by Brian Barletta, who you know pretty well by now. And I'm also with Manuela Bedoya, who you may be familiar with via her work on Sounds Profitable's The Download. But let's give our listeners even more of a chance to get to know you, Manuela. Tell us about you. Hello, hello. Thanks, Ariel. And hi, everyone. As Ariel mentioned, my name is Manuela, and I'm thrilled to be here. I'm the head of operations here at Sounds Profitable. Having recently joined the team earlier this month, I'm super excited to get to work. Yay. So yes, when I referred to some new team members at Sounds Profitable in my intro, I was referring to you and of course to Gavin, who is not so new, but relatively new. And now Sounds Profitable is a team of four. And then I am your honorary fifth sometimes here for this podcast. So Brian, talk to me. You brought Manuela on. How do you feel? Really good. (laughs) Really good. At first, I was really excited because I handed off all these things that had been stressing me out that I just couldn't get to. And Manuela knocked them out of the park. And then I realized that to fill that void, I found a thousand new things to start working on. So uh, I got a, a quick reprieve from that, but it's it's awesome. I'm you know, this company wasn't started with the intention of being a company. It was started because I knew there was a hole. I wanted to help. I wanted to write about these things. And it became a company as it grew and as we got a lot of interest in it. So I am not particularly great with organization. <laughs> and Manuela has First proven step is time and again. It. Yeah, and Manuel has proven time and again uh, that she can knock it out of the park, and so it's uh, it's been really powerful. Tom kills it as a business partner. I'm very happy to have him on board as well. But these are the things that we we need help with. We need help with structuring the business, setting things up to grow, so that we're not reacting to everything, but instead we have things planned out quarters in advance. And I'm most excited because Manuela helped us plan our Q1 events in advance instead of last time when I came to her with about one week turnaround, (laughs) which gave us three weeks before our event went live in Q4. Love that. So a moment ago, Manuela, I referred to the download, which is Sounds Profitable's podcast about the business of podcasting. That is how listeners may be familiar with you. But give us give us a little preview for let's play around with the power of promo swaps, with the power of collaboration with other shows. Let's see if we can bring some of our listeners here to that podcast. Tell us about the download, where people can find it, and what are the goals for the download? Yeah, so the download is our weekly rundown of the most important news in the business of podcasting. Uh, You can tune in to hear myself and my lovely co-host, Shreya Sharma, uh, to give you the latest on what's happening in audio, ad tech, and the podcasting world. Brian, how did that podcast come to be? And how did you find Manuela to, to be the host of it? Great. Those are great questions. We started the download I guess about a year ago, I think it was just a year ago, about January or December, uh, one year ago, uh, and me and Evo Terra sat down with the idea of doing it as the recap for the investments and the acquisitions for the previous year. We wanted to have a new style and a new take because every week we were just reading so much interesting information. We're reading about not only the things in podcasting, which you can find everything daily in pod news, big fan of that, Um, inside podcasting, all of those great takes. There are a lot of great individual uh, newsletters uh, like uh, Amplify Media puts out one, Pacific Content does, so many great podcast newsletters. But the business of podcasting is more than just what happens in our space. It's not necessarily like what studio has been opened or closed, but it's also what's happening in the advertising landscape overall, what's happening in the media landscape overall, what's sentiment from advertisers, what's sentiment from publishers. It's the bigger scope. So we created this massive list of uh, subscribed newsletters, whether they're paid or not. And I, I think easily every week we have to go through about over a hundred different, um, you know, individual newsletters or articles and pick which ones make the most sense to cover. 
And so that process started with uh, me and Evo, and we very quickly wanted to no longer be the hosts. We reached out to Manuela, who we knew who was working with LWC Studios at the time, and Shreya Sharma, who is the writer for Inside Podcasting, gave us the opportunity to work with Gavin Gaddis. They are a uh, fantastic critic in the podcasting space and pulled them in to be the writer for us. And what's really exciting is Evo and I phased out as the writers. I have been primarily the person picking the articles. Everybody else has an option to to participate and and submit stuff. Uh, And then Gavin, it's I'm really blown away by Gavin. Gavin has helped so much by helping filter out some of those articles and sources that we have, knowing what I will and won't pull up in general. So we skim that down, making it easier for us to get through it, making sure we highlight the right things and build that content. And what's even more exciting is that uh, starting in February, the download will also be a, a newsletter uh, available in the Sounds Profitable feed as well. We'll be sending out two emails in the Sounds Profitable feed every week now. And the intent there is that the podcast is honestly fantastic. It's 10 minutes or less and it gets you everything you need to know. And the theme song is kind of catchy. Uh, and, <laughs> and it changed a little bit, right? Uh, I don't think I shouldn't have changed too much. I heard some more instrumentals. Oh man. I did. Uh-oh. Um, I, did. I like it. Okay. Uh, and uh, like <laughs> Manuel and Treya are, are fantastic hosts of it. But the, uh, the intent is that some people just like to read that. And so we're going to put it out Thursday afternoon as well. Um, in podcast or it's going to be podcast format Thursday afternoon and as a newsletter Thursday afternoon, just to give people an option to consume it. And I'm really excited to announce that Magellan AI has bought in as our partner to help make that possible for the year. So we'll be partnering them throughout the year because truly they provided such great, unique content for us to use in the Sounds Profitable newsletter. And we've stripped, if everybody's seen on the rebrand, we've stripped every bit of advertisement and endorsement in the main newsletter. It's only our partners in there so that we can more focus on the content we create there and find other ways to serve our partners. Wow. If that does not make you want to go listen to the download, I don't know what will. So folks (laughs) who are listening now, if you are subscribed to this feed, go and also subscribe to the download. Make sure you are getting everything you need to know about the business of podcasting. It is essential listening. Well, that's the cool thing. We actually put it all on one feed. We were ahead of the curve. I know oh, Ashley Carmen wrote about that recently. Yeah. yeah. And then Evo wrote about it before that. And then in the dawn of time, Tom Webster originally wrote about it. And so that's uh, we're big fans of that. We really did consolidate everything. All of our, our content is all on one feed now. Love that. So you don't even need to. You just need to hit play. You, you don't even need to You're go already subscribe. here. You just need to hit play. Yeah. Brian, you teased something just a moment ago. You teased the rebrand. And if folks are looking at the cover art for this podcast or looking at the website, soundsprofitable.com, they will notice that things look different now than they did even a month ago. So I have a few things that I want to talk about in this episode. I want to talk about the rebrand. I want to recap our Q4 summit that took place in NYC. I want to talk about the Q1 summit that's going to take place. I want to talk about research that we can look forward to this year other events that Sounds Profitable is going to have a presence at. And then I want to talk about anything new on the Sounds Profitable horizon that I may not know about. I'm going to ask you to fill me in. So let's start with the rebrand. Talk to me about the rebrand. Why, how, who, what, when, where, why, you know. Uh, Because at some point, uh, my college roommate drawing uh, little doodles (laughs) uh, on a website that's built uh, uh, fantastically for what pod news does as a newsletter first is not uh the right solution for us to list all of our research and our video content and our guides and all these other things we needed to step it up a little bit uh one of the things i wrote was that it's time for the brand to mature i don't think when we started sounds proper when i started sounds proper that i ever had any thoughts that it would get to this point that we're really able to be an advocacy bureau for all the podcasting. Um, but here we are and it's incredibly cool to be able to do that. But, um, we really probably need to step up the style and the presentation. If we expect people to put these in pitches to major holding companies and all of that. So toning down a little bit of that, you know, uh, cartoony feel and a little more professionalism. There is a ton of stock photos on there. That is my only pet peeve. I love it overall. I love everything on there. But Manuela and I know that we have are on a mission to fill that with our partners and the amazing people in the podcasting space directly. And that's so uh, interesting. Really explore. I that. know somebody who um, is a stock photo herself. And am I on the website? 
You are not, That's but um, um, Manuela, who's on there? What's <laughs> Jeremy, Jeremy Ennis? Ennis? On there? Yeah, Ennis. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Jer- yes. Yep. When I went yeah, on, he's yeah. definitely on there. I went on the website. and I was like, oh look, a familiar face. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. There's a whole movement. But, there's a whole movement. A stock stock photo movement. A podcast movement, if it were. Yeah. Um, but the uh, the rebrand's really fun, and now we're on uh, Mailchimp, and uh, it's been very fun to explore that. Uh, we have uh, some of the the design has been done by GIF uh, Design Studios, and they've been fantastic. Honestly, really, really great. Uh, little custom things like our partners logos being so front and center and rotating the ability for them to rotate at the bottom and being able to keep that mindset over when we send out our newsletters has been really awesome. And I really got to give a lot of credit to both Manuela and Gavin. They have uh, taken full ownership of this process to get things set up. So they become masters of both MailChimp and WordPress. And this has made everything incredibly easy for us because now it's all in house. For folks who are not seeing the logo, have not seen it yet, or the whole rebrand, what vibes would you say it gives off? What words did you feed to design studios to to tell them what you wanted? Oh, I, and the, the direct ask was, Tom, can you take care of this? <laughs> uh, no, Tom, Tom's not with us today, which is a bummer because Tom is in the jury duty mines right now oh um, after... Uh, you know, a long lifetime of never being on jury duty, Tom was selected. Uh, and I think it was solely because he said, don't worry, I never get selected. Oh. Uh, but yeah, Tom really led that. I was really, really proud of that. And, you know, he really got a great feel of combining both of our styles. I think mod is the word I would use for it. Yeah, it's definitely got so. that that feel. And it looks like modern art. I, yeah, it yeah. makes me feel really proud. I'm really excited. Yeah. The next goal is to get that on some shirts and hats and stuff, and uh, then selectively pass them out. Selectively, just kidding. I'll give them. I'll give them to anybody who wants them. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's got a really cool style to it. Let's talk about the summit that took place last month, December of 2022, in New York City. Manuela, what was the venue like? I know you found it. The venue was wonderful. Honestly, it was a huge open space. It, it was perfect for people to come in and network, uh, you know, talk to people who they haven't had a chance to. The food was amazing as well. We worked with really, <laughs> really great um, contractors for that. Um, and it went really well, I think. Uh, our program yeah, was, was, yeah, our program went really smooth. Um, Brian was a really a big fan of it. Uh, we did a little bit of networking and towards the middle uh, we did a presentation um, of our safe and sound our latest research and um, at the end we ended off with some food and drinks which was really really great and everyone everyone had a great time honestly the event was phenomenal like we it was our first standalone event the first one that we did before that was uh, attached to podcast movement so we didn't know what to expect it was december 1st it wasn't that far from thanksgiving it was incredibly close to uh, Christmas and the holidays and everybody checking out. You know, the venue was set for 130 people. We exceeded that. And uh, it was really a home run. We got everybody under one roof to talk about brand safety and suitability, the values of that in podcasting, what makes it so different. And then we had a little bit of a town hall, which was a really fun experience because it was all like-minded people. It was no press. It was very private. And we could ask tough questions. And we did. And then the food and drink uh, were top-notch. Um, and, and if you ever need a venue or a caterer in New York, venue. please reach out to us. They were, uh, they were really they great. Were fantastic. Yeah, yeah. And a fun fact that I told everybody who would listen is that it was right next door to my favorite Thai place. So you get two for one. If you're interested, just let us know. <laughs> um, uh, well, yeah, we, I should have joined you there. You should have. But, we went, yeah, we went we, somewhere uh, and it was mediocre. It was, it was, that's, I was being very kind. I turned down <laughs> amazing sushi that Tom picked. <laughs> <laughs> That restaurant is not a sponsor. Maybe the Thai restaurant will be. All right. So that was Q4's event. And that was the second event that uh, Sounds Profitable put on in person. And that will be the start of quarterly events. Is that right? From now on. Correct. Yeah. Every single quarter. Let's talk about Q1 of 2023's event. Where and when? Well, we have two strategies for our events going forward. One will be our own events, which we're going to push as hard as we can to uh, branch out from just podcasting events. We want to be a major reason why podcasting as a community shows up at major advertising, media, 
branding content events, right? So we're going to piggyback on as many of them as we can. We will do them officially when we can. We will do them unofficially when they want way too much money for it. Because as a reminder, our events are all free to our partners. We are not interested in charging tickets for our events. We do ask people are interested in sponsoring to help us make them even more successful. But at the end of the day, they're open to our partners. And then our goal recently is to invite agencies, advertisers, brands, uh, marketers, holding companies that are new to podcasting and want to learn more because we're putting them right next to the key audience members that are going to be able to help them while also showing them great research on stage. So South by Southwest on uh, March 11th, Saturday, March 11th from 2 to 6 p.m. We're finalizing an amazing venue uh, and we're working with The Roost, part of Rooster Teeth and Warner Media, uh, to uh, really throw this event and make it successful. We have another uh, partner in the works who I'm really excited about because this is an Austin-based one. The Roost is located in Austin and they're so really going to help us. Uh, no, thank you. Oh, really? No, nope. okay. him and Alex Jones. Uh, no, nope, not, no not particularly interested in inviting <laughs> either of them. Uh, I'm not I coming, apologize. Uh, yeah, uh, they're I'm more than welcome for Spotify to attend on uh, their behalf with Spotify as a partner, but I would like Mr. Rogan to, to stay home. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's I'm really excited. You know, AJ has been a major supporter of Sounds Profitable and to be able to really launch our first foot forward into saying and proving we need to be where podcasting needs to be, not where podcasting already is and help drive that message home that South by Southwest is one of those places because the first six or seven days is a podcast track, which overlaps with a, an advertising track. So all the right people are there. And while the event did get hit hard by the pandemic, there's still a ton of value for being there. And I'm going to be honest with you. It's a lot more affordable than people think. There's a lot of cool things there. Plus there's a lot of cool movie premieres. I think legitimately one of my main reasons for sticking around is I think there's an early screening of the Dungeons and Dragons movie. And yeah, I'm that much of a nerd. I, <laughs> I'm that excited for that. But the other strategy we have for our events that I'm also excited about is related to the fact that our partners are committed to all of these different things throughout the years, right? Podcast movement has proven itself as the primary business-based podcasting event, right? For the greater ecosystem. It's accessible for everyone. You don't necessarily have to be a partner or sounds profitable. Like you do like podcast movement, you just buy a ticket, right? And people show up. And it's really great. And so for that event and other events that we find valuable, we're going to go there and then we're going to do neat things. We're going to do dinners when we can. We're going to hold um, space inside of them. And that's a great segue there. At Podcast Movement, just outside the end of the expo hall, we have an entire space that's kind of the size of an expo hall where we're going to have four pods for semi-private meetings for our partners to, to have there, a bunch of standing space, coffee, tea, snacks, and its own private courtyard. And the reason why I'm so excited about this is because we're going to hold open sessions in the morning with, you know, cust uh, like unique content and some networking, but then we close it off and it's only accessible to our partners. Oh. And the reason for that is that the main strip is about 20 minutes away. And I want to keep as many of the business people in podcasting at that event for as long as I possibly can, because Vegas is very appealing. I don't know if you've heard any rumors about the city of sin and <laughs> its draw on people's excitement and interest. But I want like if I got a message that was like, hey, let's meet at Caesars for lunch at noon, I might bounce. So I want to provide a space where people can have those business meetings and stick around and are able to connect with as many people as possible. And that's really our secondary goal. Where our partners are, we are going to work as hard as possible to make it more valuable. And that's everything from podcast movement and having that space there to our presence at the IAB and what we plan to do to drive organizations like that forward. What are the vegan food options like in Vegas? I feel like Caesars is not your best bet. No, God, at this point, I just assume that I'm eating protein bars and politely nodding to people. Pretzels are a great win. It's been Manuela and Tom are honestly so Fantastic. Manuela makes sure that every one of our events has something that's actually a meal uh, as a vegan option. And Tom, every time I travel with Tom, he books the most amazing vegan restaurants for us to go to. Aww. Because one time at, at I think it was at the podcast movement in, in Dallas, he watched me eat a dry Beyond Burger because there's no cheese and I didn't want to just put ketchup on it. Um for like three days in a row and he was like never again <laughs> like <laughs> so i got i got a great team supporting me and my uh my vegan lifestyle there i love that good team supporting vegan yep 
Yep, yep, yep. I was listening to a podcast recently, Today Explained, incredible show, about this is a, this is an aside. I hope you like this, listeners. This is what you get. <laughs> <laughs> um, Today Explained was, did an episode on how they're going to be growing meat in factories from single cells of, like, chicken. And I won't eat that, I don't think. Will you eat that? Sierra bought me ground vegan turkey the other day, and... I just like blindly made it and I was thinking about it. And as I'm handling it, I was like, ah, oh, it feels gross. And then I made it and I went to eat it. And the texture and the feel was so much like real ground meat. I can't meat do it. That I looked at it. I was like, I can't. I like, can't do it. And I, I'm not necessarily vegan for ethical reasons. It made me feel healthier and all that. But now I'm at the point where like to me – it's rotten food, mm. right? Like it is not something I'm supposed to eat. It has not made my life easier. I will admit that fully. It has definitely made me a little bit rounder in certain aspects. Uh, but uh, overall, I feel better. But it is not a – I would say the world is vegetarian right now. I think being vegan is still rough. And I don't I, – I, kudos to all the people that can enjoy things like that. I can't. won't be me. I can't yeah. do it. Anyway, thank you for listening to that aside. Today Explained is a great <laughs> podcast from the Vox Media Podcast Network. All right, next up, I would love to talk about research that we can expect in 2023. So 2022, we had the creators. We had Safe and Sound. Those were great studies that provided a lot of amazing statistics for people to use in their decks and for people to learn more about the podcast space to synthesize this information. What can we look forward to, if you can share? Yeah, so we also had um, after these messages ah, and the follow up. We'll be right back. And after back. these we messages, which also provided so year. much helpful information for people to put. <laughs> no, in their it's decks. good. Well, I mean, but but that's a that's a great point. We put out so much research that it was easy to 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 miss some of it on the list. And um, our two goals for research this year is at a minimum we'll be putting out one a quarter, and we'll be presenting them. But our secondary goal is we're trying to find the right partner to work with to broadcast that further. I think we've done a really great job at getting our research in front of the people in podcasting, the people that read Sounds Proper, the people that read Pod News, the people who are committed to podcasting, know about us, know about that research. But it, next, the next goal is how do we get those people who are advertisers, marketers, buyers, everything, right? All these people that read these major trade publications at these big brands and these big holding companies, how do we get them to know about it? So that's a quest that we're on right now. We haven't quite cracked that. So if you're listening to this and you happen to have a massive distribution and you'd like to partner with us for that, you hit me up. Happy to talk about it. But um, our research will continue to be uh, actionable. I think that the research that we continue to see in podcasting that's presented oftentimes shows a specific company's point of view. Not all of them, but I think a lot of them do. And then the rest of it is a benchmark of where we are and what's changed. Every bit of research that we put out is meant to be actionable. It's meant to solve a problem. It's meant to have as much staying power as possible. It's meant to prove out podcasting versus other things. So that's our goal with every bit of our research. Our goal is for every slide in it to be standalone, for every bit of, uh, a bit of research to help somebody get funding for their company, sell their company, sell ad space in the company, strategically improve the quality of their podcast or uh, convince an advertiser that, wow, now I know that and I'm ready to go. So that's what I can say now. We're in the midst of finalizing the research for Q1. Um, I asked Tom to summarize it and he gave me an eight minute video to share with our research partners, which honestly was a home run, but I would not do that justice. So we'll have them on in the future to talk a little bit more about that. Stay tuned. Thank you. Any specifics you can give us for what we can look forward to with research? For like the Q1 yeah. report? Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be a lot about comparing and understanding the sentiment between podcasting and other channels. Ooh. I think that podcasting uh, or when, when a recession looms, people immediately think about where they can cut. And I think that podcasting as an experimental budget is easy to cut because not enough people at an organization are aware of it. It's not tied in well enough. It's not part of multi-touch or all these other things on there. So the real intent here is to create something that's not only defensible for when someone says, I think we're going to cut our podcast spend to show them why that's the wrong idea. But it's a great idea to show people when they say, you know, like, well, Facebook's still working for us. And we can say, well, I'm pretty sure you can do better with podcasting. Why don't you try that out and consider moving your spend from there? Heck yeah. I'm into it. That's I'm, the goal. I never advocate for social media spend, especially when it comes to podcasters. But yeah, bigger brand budgets have a lot to consider, but they should definitely be considering audio. More on yeah. that soon. Thank you for the, the look ahead and for the recap of Q4's event. 
I want to talk about new things going on with Sounds Profitable that I might not be aware of. So I, I heard talk of uh, of the newsletter, of course. There's going to be the new newsletter going out on Thursdays. What other initiatives are brewing? Yeah, so I want to do this podcast weekly again. I really enjoyed it. I really like talking to people. I, you know, Everybody can skip an episode, but it's not for them. No, you can't. And that's fine. Oh, I Never mean, skip. I'm okay with it. <laughs> I'm not going to cry. You, people are busy. I'm very happy for all the attention that we get and all the people's time that they share with us. But I get it. Sometimes, you know, you want to listen to something else so you can't catch up and it's not worth, uh, you know, listening to three or four episode ba- backlog and you'd rather just keep going. It's okay. So I think that this Wednesday spot, we're going to get back to doing it more frequently. I think it'll be, you know, Ariel, me and you. We'll have Tom on it. We'll have Manuela on it. And the intent will be when we do have an interview, we'll add it in there. Because truthfully, it's been hard to get everybody uh, like interviewed and get that in there and the setup that me and Ariel do. So sometimes it'll just be the Sounds Profitable team talking about recent articles and, and whatnot. But the the real kicker, the thing that I really want to focus on is that Tom's going to have a spotlight section. And that's going to be all about research because there's a lot of research that comes out there and it's all fantastic. But how do you use it? What do you take away from it? Where do you hold it for a grain of salt? What research should you know about that you're not subscribed to and where to get it? So that's what Tom's going to do. And it'll be a mix of Tom just providing his feedback and kind of walking through it. And maybe we'll be even pulling in the people who created it up to talk a little bit more about it and kind of figure out how we can continue to push people to create stuff that helps everybody in this space. Awesome. Okay, Manuela, back to you. I have a question for you about starting to work at Sounds Profitable. You started earlier this month. Brian beforehand, it had been Brian and Tom and um, Gavin, and then you came in. And was there anything about the organization that you were like, Brian, you've been doing it like this for this long, and now you're here and you're you're making it better. So wh- what have you noticed? Yeah, so I'm I'm just glad to come in and kind of take some things off of Brian and Tom's plate. Um, I love to work in the back end of things. Uh, like Brian said, I am extremely organized. So I, I do like to create processes and workflows and kind of optimize the way in which we collaborate, not just within our team, but also with our partners. Um, so I'm excited for that. I am very jealous of your organized brain. <laughs> it's been it's been really fun because I get to just say like, hey, this is how we do this right now. And I like to do that on video because I just watch Manuela's face like, you what? Like, <laughs> It's like it, it's like if somebody came over and you're just like that plate's kind of clean. You can eat off of that, and they're like, it's not. That's not clean um, at all. <laughs> yeah, and Manuela just looks at these things, and I was just like, instead of being like, this is what I'd like, I, I'm just kind of like, help. <laughs> like, here's my current process. Here's how I go through it, uh, and it's been great. I mean, like, look, it's uh, sometimes there's times like I we went through my task list, and I was just like, oh, I probably have to get those contracts signed and invoices sent. And like I looked at that problem and I was like, oh, there goes my like Friday night. And instead, I wrote up four emails to Manuela, sent it all over to her. And Monday, because thankfully she's, you know, also she reasonable with her balance. time. <laughs> yes, which is great. She needs to work on it a little bit more. She's been amazing and she's over the uh, like uh, phenomenal. Um, but I keep being like, hey, I'm the one who's supposed to be crazy uh, about work life balance. Uh, you relax a little bit she's been killing it but then monday by the end of monday she nailed all she wrote all the contracts she got all the invoices out it uh it's night and day right and then what's really exciting is is the the clear goal is for manuela to be able to you know take a even bigger role once we get away from like kind of cleaning up the mess that i've made i'm very (laughs) honest with that and comfortable with that the goal will be for manuela to be able to plan multiple quarters out like we know where we want to be for q2 q3 q4 for our events once we get to the point where manuela has the next two quarters planned out we're really excited for her to take on an even bigger role at the company and help do even more i cannot wait to watch sounds profitable come together to make a huge impact for the podcast industry, for the audio space. And Manuela, I can't wait to continue to watch you grow. It's been a pleasure. And uh, Brian and Manuela, thank you so much for taking the time to sit with me in the virtual studio to talk about the future of Sounds Profitable. 
Listeners, thank you for tuning in. Let us know if you have any questions. We would love to hear from you. Please reach out. I am on Twitter at Ari This and That, and we are now active on LinkedIn. You can just search for Sounds Profitable. And if you want to send us an email, that's podcast at soundsprofitable.com. Yeah, uh, the Sounds Profitable company is still at, at Sounds Prof News. True, true. On Twitter. On Twitter. <laughs> we are still but, there. But I will tell you that that's, um, we're spending less and less You'll time. You'll notice there, I that think. I did not put that in our outro. <laughs> I appreciate it, but I think it's so good to call out. We're, we're still there. We're, we're working on it a little bit. But the truth is, is I don't think Twitter is where we want to be. But each of us can be found individually on LinkedIn. And we'd love to hear from you. Please, seriously, don't just hit follow. Send a message. I'd love to connect with you. All of us would love to connect with you and figure out how we can collaborate. And uh, yeah, I guess for Twitter, I'll, I'll say this. It has not broken down yet. It is, you know, sure. three months <laughs> yep. since uh, we all thought that it was just going to go straight down the drain. And it does still exist. So you can absolutely, when you take screenshots of our research presentations, you can tag us in them. We'd love to We'd love to hear from you. I will show you the list of the new bots who followed me in the past <laughs> month. Uh, but we record all of this. Uh, our podcasts are deep dives using Squadcast. It's the best way to record studio quality audio and video with anyone, anywhere, at any time. If you're still using Zoom to record your remote content, you're leaving quality on the table. Squadcast records your conversations locally, which ensures your recorded content will look and sound amazing. You can try out Squadcast free by going to squadcast.fm, signing up for a free trial, and using code SPPARTNERS for an extension on that trial. Again, that's squadcast.fm, and the code is SPPARTNERS. Do you want more from Sounds Profitable? Make sure you are subscribed to this podcast feed so you can get all of our podcasts right there. And you can get more information about Sounds Profitable. Subscribe to the newsletter. Do everything you need at soundsprofitable.com. And thanks to you for listening to this episode of Sounds Profitable Ad Tech Applied with me, Brian Barlow. And me, Ariel Nissenblatt. And me, Manuela Bedoya. Until next time. This episode is put together using Spooler. It's edited by Reese Carmen and Ron Tendick, and it is hosted on Art19.